Hey everybody, my name is Rob Maurer. Today we are talking about Tesla's Q4 delivery and production report, which they just released today in pre-market. And just after market opened today, that is driving Tesla stock up to about $452 per share. So we'll see how the rest of the day goes, but obviously a positive reaction. So let's take a look at the release. Tesla says, quote, in the fourth quarter, we achieved record production of almost 105,000 vehicles and record deliveries of approximately 112,000 vehicles. In 2019, we delivered approximately 367,500 vehicles, 50% more than the previous year, and in line with our full year guidance. So then they list out production, deliveries, and then the lease accounting. So Model S and X production was about 18,000, with 19,450 deliveries. Model 3 production was about 87,000, with about 92,550 deliveries, again, totaling up to that 112,000. So as we've been talking about earlier this week, the fact set consensus estimate was just over 106,000. So Tesla easily beating those estimates. As I said yesterday, I expected somewhere around 110,000 with just under 20,000 SNX and the rest in Model 3. So I'm pretty happy with that estimate for myself. And then Tesla did also give us an update on Gigafactory Shanghai here saying, quote, we continue to focus on expanding production in both the US as well as our newly launched facility in Shanghai. Despite breaking ground at Gigafactory Shanghai less than 12 months ago, we have already produced just under 1,000 customer saleable cars and have begun deliveries. We have also demonstrated production run rate capability of greater than 3,000 units per week, excluding local battery pack production, which began in late December. As we've been talking about throughout the course of this week, Shanghai production has been a bit of a mystery. We've heard reports up to anywhere of close to 1,500 per week, and it looks like throughout the entire quarter, they say just under 1,000 customer saleable cars. So that definitely was an extrapolated rate, despite some of the reporting that we had seen out there. And that's okay. Tesla broke ground on Gigafactory Shanghai less than a year ago. So to even have produced 1,000 cars or just under 1,000 cars within a year is really incredible. And they say here that they've demonstrated the capability of greater than 3,000 units per week. So what I think that is, is I think that's the 28 per hour that we've heard reported. And then that's expanded over 10 hour shifts. So 280 per day. Then you multiply that by two for two shifts, 20 hours per day. You're up to, you know, 560 or so. And then you take that for a six day work week and then you're over 3000. So I think that's how Tesla is getting to this number. I wouldn't expect Q1 production certainly to be anywhere close to 3000 per week. Tesla will still continue to ramp this up. And we just need to keep in mind as we've learned with this report, that those production rates are not steady state until Tesla is kind of through that production ramp up period of time. So an interesting aspect here of that report. But let's go back to deliveries and take a little bit more of a closer look here. So if you are watching this on YouTube, I do have some of the charts put up here. So here you can see Tesla's deliveries by quarter all the way back to the beginning of 2012 Q3 when they started deliveries of Model S. And over time, Tesla's consistently grown them with some exceptions quarter over quarter for seasonality, things like that. But here we see Q4 2019 setting a new all-time record, significantly ahead of last quarter, which was around 97,000. I've also put the fact set consensus on here, so you can see Tesla overachieved that both for Model S and X in terms of the percentage of total deliveries, as well as for Model 3, driving the total quarter up over 112,000 for a beat of about 6,000 units. So if we look at how that breaks down by year to, again, account for some of that seasonality, you can see that 2019 also setting a new record above 367,000 deliveries up over the 250,000 from last year. As Tesla said, about 50% growth and within their guidance for the year, which again was 360,000 to 400,000. So congrats to Tesla for achieving that. And I think that as we talk about a lot on the Tesla Daily Podcast, restores a lot of credibility for Tesla going forward. And it removes uncertainty whenever that credibility gets restored. And that has a huge, huge positive impact on the stock. And I think that's also some of what we're seeing today. If people can trust Tesla, then they start to get more of that credit for things moving forward, which is a really good thing. Next year, I wanna take a quick look at the year over year growth. So again, Q4 coming in at 112,000. That's up about 23% over last year, which as you can see, was right around 90,000. So pretty healthy growth, but it did trail Tesla's overall growth for the year with more of that happening in the early part of the year as last year in Q4, Tesla was at a pretty good production rate for Model 3. So that has slowed the growth from a year-over-year -year perspective somewhat, but as we get Gigafactory Shanghai online, and as we get Model Y up online in 2020, 
those growth rates should accelerate. And I think that's what's really exciting. So one of the things I've put in here on the YouTube version is Tesla's year over year annual delivery growth. So you can see it's been pretty consistent throughout Tesla's history with 2014 year over year growth being 41%, 2015 being 60%, 2016 being 51%, 2017 dipping a little bit as Model 3 took a little bit longer for Tesla to get ramped up that year to 35%, but then a huge, huge spike in 2018 as Tesla did start to get that production rate up for 142% year over year growth. So that's what Tesla has had to comp this year. I think that, I mean, for the last five years at least, that was the highest growth rate that Tesla had. And yet we're seeing a 47% year over year increase on top of that huge number. And that's super important and super impressive. When we look at analyst consensus estimates, which again are from FactSet here, they are estimating that 2020 would be 26% higher with around 463,000 deliveries in total. And then 2021 being a 31% growth rate on that with around 600,000 vehicle deliveries. So obviously I believe these are very conservative numbers. Those would be the two slowest growth years in Tesla's history, at least for as far back as I have the history here. So those, those consensus estimates are gonna have to come up as Tesla ramps up Gigafactory Shanghai and as they ramp up Model Y. As we sit here today, Tesla may already be approaching a run rate in terms of production of about 120,000 vehicles, maybe getting close to 125,000 when we include Gigafactory Shanghai. That's about 500,000 a year. And again, the analyst consensus estimate is only about 463,000 per year. And that doesn't account for any Model Y this year, which Tesla has said should be at a production rate of about 1,000 per week, at least by the middle of the year. So you throw that on, you're looking at 550, maybe 600,000 in terms of the run rate of production. That's about a year ahead here of what FactSet has, maybe six months to a year. So those estimates are going to come up, and that is, again, also going to help drive the stock. By the way, one of the reasons that I do look at the fact set consensus isn't because I necessarily care too much about the analyst opinion on the stock, other than the fact that they do influence, obviously, Wall Street's reactions, as well as the media's perception of how the report is. So in this case, with Tesla beating that fact set consensus, the reporting is going to be positive for the most part. I would imagine probably across the board, especially with the stock price reaction. But if Tesla had come in at, say, 105000 to 106000 then the media would have been reporting that as a miss. And then that has that compounding impact of the perception then being that Tesla performed poorly, even if they would have technically beat guidance with a delivery number of 105,000. So on the screen here, you can just see a few examples of over time media reporting on those fact set numbers. So that's why I think it's important to look at and understand what those expectations are. The other interesting thing to look at here, I think, is the variance between production and deliveries. So Tesla produced 105,000 vehicles for the quarter. That's strong growth quarter over quarter as well, but they did have you know 7,000 more deliveries than vehicles produced. So we were talking in yesterday's episode about Q1 numbers, and back in the Q2 earnings call, Elon said that sequential quarter over quarter deliveries comparing Q1 to Q4 would be tough, and I think this gives us some visibility into why that may be. So as we said, you know production for Q1 could be somewhere I don't know, let's say 115,000 to 120,000 units. Tesla has drained inventory over the last six months, and they can use Q1 as an opportunity to build some of that inventory back up for the latter half of 2020. And I think they will take advantage of that opportunity. So I'd expect production to outpace deliveries, even if it is just by that same amount at 7,000. Let's say production then ends up being 115,000 or so in Q1. Deliveries of 108,000 would actually be down quarter over quarter from Q1 to Q4 in terms of that comparison. So I think that offers some explanation as to why Elon said that Q1 would be tough. And I'd have to go back and look at the quote, but I think he said that Q2 would be sort of okay. And then Q3 and Q4 of 2020 would be incredibly strong. That would obviously be as Gigafactory Shanghai gets fully ramped up and Model Y starts to hit volume production as well. So a lot of exciting things ahead for Tesla in 2020. The other topic I wanted to talk about today is Tesla's pricing for the Made in China Model 3. This morning they announced that they will be lowering the price on the Made in China Model 3, previously beginning at 355,800 yuan, now down to 323,800 yuan. So that's about $46,500, which is still more expensive than a similarly equipped made in the US version in the US market. So I think Tesla still has room to come down as production gets ramped up. 
But the nice thing about this price change is that after subsidies, it hits an important milestone of under 300,000 yuan. So it'll come in right at 299,000 yuan, which converts to about 43,000 US dollars. So again, a little bit more expensive than the US made Model 3 is in the US. And I think over time, Tesla will bring that price down even further to be similarly priced to the US market. As production continues to ramp up from Gigafactory Shanghai, I would expect that Tesla will continue to lower the price here to bring it more in line with the made in the US Model 3s, especially after subsidy. There's no reason that once production is ramped up, the cost of goods sold should be more significant than what they are on the US made Model 3s. So Tesla can either pocket that extra margin or they can bring prices down to be more in line with the US market, which is what I would expect. So while price drops might seem concerning sort of early on in this process, I wouldn't take it as a sign of poor demand. Tesla has said that sales are very strong and that everything that has been produced and is being produced has been sold. So to me, it's not a question of whether or not the demand is there at this point. Rather, it's just a sign that Tesla is continuing in the ramp up. And as that happens, these prices will continue to fall. So overall, a great Q4 for Tesla. I think as people start to digest this report, they're going to be remodeling for the Q4 financials. And I think this 112,000 delivery number is going to surprise a lot of people in terms of the financial impact that it has, especially when we look at the fact that Tesla delivered 7,000 more vehicles than they produced. That's going to be a strong positive for free cash flow as well. So I would expect Tesla's cash position at the end of the quarter to increase pretty significantly from these results. You've also got that nice bonus from Model S and X deliveries being up. So those were up 11% quarter over quarter. Those should have a healthier margin than Model 3, though it's probably getting pretty close at this point. So to have those additional S and X vehicles in the delivery, even though they're not a higher percent of the mix this quarter than they were last quarter, having those additional units is going to help a lot with the financials. Based on Tesla's previous reporting, I would expect that Q4 earnings report to be aftermarket close on Wednesday, January 29th. That is really it for today, though. I would be curious to hear people's opinions on Q1 deliveries and production. So if you're on YouTube, leave a comment there. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And if you have questions or feedback, send those to me at Tesla Daily Podcast at gmail.com. That is it for today, and I will see you next week for continued episodes of the Tesla Daily Podcast. Thank you.